Okay, so as I mentioned in the previous video, the defining characteristic in digital electronics is reading whether a signal exists, it's on, or if the signal doesn't exist, it's off. As in all things, there's a bit of nuance here. But to start, the voltages that represent this on-off state are called the logic levels. As a reminder, a 1 is the on or high state, and 0 is the off or low state. Now ideally, one voltage will represent the high state and another voltage will represent the low state. In practice, however, there are a range of voltages that represent the high state and a range that represents the low state. The key here is that there is a buffer area between the high voltages and the low voltages so that there is no possibility for overlap in the high and low ranges. The figure you have been looking at illustrates this concept. For the logic level to be set to high, there is a maximum high voltage, or V sub H max, and a minimum high voltage, or V sub high min. Likewise, for the logic level to be set to low, there is a max low voltage, or V sub L max, and a minimum low voltage, or V sub L min. Between VH min and VL max is the buffer zone where the logic level will not change from high to low or from low to high. Digital waveforms go back and forth from high to low, changing from 1 to 0 and back again. This is represented graphically using the ideal pulse or square waveform. So let's take a look at two pieces of a waveform, a positive going pulse and a negative going pulse. The first thing to note about these pulses is that they are time dependent. That is, the horizontal axis is in time while the vertical axis is in voltage. Because all we care about is whether the pulse represents a high state or a low state, the air quotes vertical axis is simply zero or one. Just like any other graph, the horizontal, in this case the time axis, is red from the left. So in other words, time starts on the left and passes by going to the right. So looking at the positive going pulse, the first part of the waveform that passes through at T0 is on the left side. So this is called the leading edge. The back side of the square wave that passes at T1 is called the trailing edge. Because the signal is going from low to high on the leading edge, it is also called the rising edge. And because the signal is going from high to low on the trailing edge, it is called the falling edge. Switching over to the negative going pulse, you can see that the leading edge at T0 goes from high to low, and so that is the falling edge. At T1, we have the trailing edge, but it is going from low to high. So in the negative going pulse, this is the rising edge. So to sum up, whether you're looking at a positive going pulse or negative going pulse, the leading edge is on the left and the trailing edge is on the right. The rising edge of the pulse, however, is wherever the pulse goes from low to high, and the falling edge is wherever the pulse goes from high to low. Realistically, the signals being passed are not these well-formed square waves. A non-ideal pulse is shown here, so most pulses have some or even all of these characteristics. The overshoot and ringing are from stray inductive and capacitive effects. Uh, the droop can come from stray capacitive and circuit resistance, usually from an RC circuit that has a, a low time constant. The most important characteristics are the rise and fall times, the amplitude, and the pulse width. Like in any waveform, the amplitude is the height of the waveform. Uh, the height of the wave is roughly the mean voltage of the overshoot ringing and droop. In real applications, the signal does not go from low to high or high to low immediately. So the time required for the pulse to go from low to high is the rise time, and the time required for the pulse to go from high to low is the fall time. The rise and fall times are calculated using the time between 10% and 90% of the amplitude. The pulse width is how long the pulse lasts, or its duration. And we measure this in time as well, and it's calculated at 50% of the amplitude. Now that's a lot of new information in a single video, but I hope you've learned something here. In the next video, uh, we're going to look at these pulses when they're all connected. Now I look forward to seeing you then.